It's time to mind your business with me, Jamila Lodge. Tune in to find out how to mind your business with BEDC, special guest entrepreneurs, industry experts, and more. Brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here. Welcome to Mind Your Business, Deshaun. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, we do this all the time. So you and I already um, have this rapport. Mm-hmm. You work with me at BDC. But today we want to talk about the Summer Student Entrepreneurship Program. Yes. And so this is an annual program that we host over the, the summer. And I want you to talk a little bit about your role, mm-hmm. why we do it, and what you hope to achieve this time around. So, yeah, so this is, I think, my fourth year doing it, um, started during COVID. Um, so basically my role here, um, outside of the daily duties, but mostly with the summer student program, mm-hmm. is just being that project manager, that project coordinator, making sure that the students have what they need, mm-hmm. any partnerships that we have. So for example, Corporation of Hamilton, um, Washington Properties, uh, Chamber of Commerce, so all of these places to, to be able to make sure that these students have opportunities to vend, to sell, mm-hmm. um, as well as now with our Barbara Muta website, so mm-hmm. they're able to set up an online store, take online payments, um, and just really trying to kickstart that next generation of entrepreneurs mm-hmm. and trying to impart that entrepreneurial mindset on, on the next generation. Um, so the students from 13 to 23, okay. um, I think when I started, it was 16, and then yes. we started to notice that the younger ones are a bit more geared exactly. in. We're like, well, why we're we just like, changing? Well, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Like, middle school? I yeah. did not have this mindset when I was in middle school. Yeah. So just seeing how innovative that some of these students are, it's, it's really, you know, really impressive. And it's inspiring, I mm-hmm. think, because our, our ultimate objective at BDC is really to encourage mm-hmm. the next generation of entrepreneurs. So if you can start as early as 13, exactly. then we're winning already, I think. But talk a little bit about the actual program and what the purpose is. Yeah. So the program is an eight-week program that mm-hmm. we run. So this year it's running from July 1st to August 23rd. So those first two weeks are really trainings. So in the first week, we use the award-winning Ice House program to impart, an, like I said earlier, an entrepreneurial mindset, mm-hmm. trying to get them in gear, understand what it is to be an entrepreneur, because we always say that, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're wearing all the hats, right? Yes. So you got to be the marketing manager, yep. you got to be the financial everything, everything, right? Officer. And you're like, I hate math, so <laughs> how am I going to make this work? But right. really just trying to get them to understand and then that second week, we focus more on the financial, so cash flow forecast, how to price your products, mm-hmm. the marketing aspect of it. Last year, I introduced um, utilizing AI mm-hmm. and how we can do those little mundane tasks you might not be good at. Like, you might be great at making candles, but I do not know how to market my product. So how you can use tools like ChatGPT to help you build out a marketing calendar. And then those next six weeks is basically them selling. out in the public, selling, making money, uh, like I said, uh, Washington Properties has mostly um, sponsored a spot in Washington Mall for students to vend. We have our online platform. Um, normally in the third week, we have a launch event that we do on City Hall okay. lawn. Um, so just trying to give the students as much exposure as possible mm-hmm. so that at the end of the program, our aim is to they start this business, they keep it, and they keep it going, and you know, hopefully as the years go on, hire employees and things like that. So So you said you've been doing this four years now. Yep. So what have you seen in terms of the types of businesses that students have started um, and also the ones that students have maintained Mm -hmm. over the years since launching them in the actual program? So I think since I've started, I've seen more of a product well products and services mm-hmm. but mostly like using their hands so yes. like landscaping mm-hmm. braiding hair um last year we had nico um bean who does hand poured acrylic art but mm-hmm. like he does cool things for example he'll have the art put on a skateboard and then he'll use marbles mm-hmm. to kind of create the designs so really innovative ideas and then i think even in my first year we had sub brown and wilkinson who did nurture leash yes which is um like a lactation goods services mm-hmm. and you know as a man i'm like I Who's gonna be buying that? Yeah, right. Like, but she did really well she because did. there was a there was, there was a need for it. So, I think a lot of times in society we discount kids and just you know young people and yeah general. young people, yeah. but they have really great ideas and just giving them the opportunity to let it grow mm-hmm. and everything. And then, like you said, ultimately we want these businesses to, to continue to continue. Yeah. And then even sometimes at the end of the program we have students that are like. Um, 
entrepreneurship right now mm -hmm. it's not i can't you know right. maintain it because i got school i got to start applying for universities but once i graduate or during the summer or winter times you see them starting to kick back up and everything and then also we have students that have left this program and then going into our enterprise Bermuda incubator so ultimately that's what we want to see as well that that, that next evolution growth yeah exactly yeah and i mean it's good to know that that we do have the programs to support them throughout mm -hmm. that journey so talk to me a little bit about those entrepreneurs that have kind of continued along like what are some of the things that you do um or you encourage them to do to kind of continue that that learning i guess you would say so one, I create, like, most times I create a WhatsApp group just mm -hmm. because they need to bounce ideas off each other's. I need to give them important information. And what I've learned, kids do not check emails. <laughs> so <laughs> They do uh, not. They do not check <laughs> emails. I'm like, did you check your email last week? No. Nope. No, I haven't looked at that in the last three months. But so kind of get at their level. It gives them the opportunity to bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, seeing them where they are mm -hmm. and always giving the inf them the information of BDC. So right. this is an event that's coming up. Um, you might want to join that. Or they might ask us, hey, is there any events that's going on? So just kind of giving them all the things th that we do here at the mm -hmm. BDC. So like, for example, even with Nico, he does his hand-poured acrylic art all the time anyway, but then he was at our artist and vendor market. Yeah. He came to some of our festival, he went to the Festival of Entrepreneurship. So just giving them the opportunities and then just see where they go from there mm -hmm. um, and also just try to keep in contact where I can with them um, just to see if there's anything else because once the program finishes we're not saying okay goodbye right right just close the door <laughs> behind you right we're, thanks for coming yeah thanks goodbye <laughs> it's more of just a, a continued relationship that we try to have yeah because we do want to see them grow and I would say that there are opportunities like for example if they participate in summer student entrepreneurship program we do have the youth pitch yeah. which we do in November and so now that's a further opportunity where you could take that very same business that you built over the summer and now participate and gain money exactly you know for exactly. pitching it in in our youth pitch competition and I know we're always like pushing this what do you what have you seen is the challenge at getting um, young people to sign up and how do you overcome that? I think the hardest challenge, and I don't think it's, this isn't really geared towards young people. I think it's a, a wider mm -hmm. um, thing, but I think it's mostly for them to realize that they can actually make money from just being an entrepreneur. Right. So the hardest part that we have is that people have already found summer jobs because yes. that's more stable. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll, and then with this program, it's a full-time commitment. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, if you have a full-time job already, that disqualifies you from being in the program because it is a full-time commitment. So that's mostly the challenge that we have. Mm -hmm. But I think doing school tours, school visits, um, talking to the teachers at these schools, the parents, grandparents, whoever that, guardians, whoever that might be, and just can't get them to understand that they can make money from mm -hmm, this. Mm -hmm. And we've had students, like last year, um, we broke a record on how, how much students made last year. So within the six weeks, between the nine of them, I think it was, they made $17,776, <laughs> I want to say. So it was, it was great to see, and that's the most that I've seen since I've started. Yeah. So just getting students to understand that this is, can be stable. It can, yeah. it can be stable. And basically, we give you the opportunity and the platform to test it, mm -hmm. right? So you're not really losing out right. at the end of it. Like, at the end of the eight weeks, you might just be like, you know, I didn't make that much, so I'll revisit this, or yeah. no, it's not for me. Right. Or at the end of it, you're like, man, I made a lot of money. I'm going to yeah. just continue Keep to do this. It. And then yeah. when next summer comes, I don't need to find a summer job because I, I have I've this. already created my own. Yeah. And the other thing um, I'd like you to share is because, like you said, some students have already identified a summer job. And so I think the perception is, well, if I do this and I don't make any money, mm -hmm. I would have just wasted eight weeks and have nothing nothing to show for it. Yep. Can you talk about kind of the, um, what would we call it, the the stipend or yeah. or our, our guarantee that yeah. you will get some some money for the time that you spend with us? Yep. And so we do have students that might not make as much as they thought, but we, we have a guaranteed wage at the end of it that you will make. Okay. So you will walk away. I believe we raised it so i think by the end of it you will make at least 3500 over the eight weeks that right. you've been in there so we give you we give them 900 dollars to start their business 
And then for each week that they check in, I see how much revenue they've made. And then we, you know, we have a whole spreadsheet, spreadsheet. that we go from, mm -hmm. but they don't walk away with zero dollars, right. right? They don't walk with away with nothing. Hopefully they walk away with more than the guarantee that, that we give them. But ultimately it's not a lose-lose situation. Right. Like you're gonna walk away with something because it is your time, it is your energy. Mm -hmm. And we recognize that because it's something that we mimicked from the workforce development mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and just want to make sure it's on par. Yeah, yeah, make sure yeah. it's on par with that. And students, you know, have the opportunity to experiment and test out these ideas without being penalized. Yes. And I think the the beauty of it is that in addition to the potential money that you can earn, now you have this business yep. that can continue to earn you revenue would if you decide to go away to college or whatever the case may be once you have that knowledge no one can take it from you yep. and then it's also the mindset yep. can you talk a little bit about what you see when they first come in and how they may or may not have changed yep. once the program has completed yeah we've I mean, I, I'm one of these students, like back in the day, very reserved, very introverted, Yeah. like could probably get six words out of me. But we see when the students first work on day one, aren't really confident in their business ideas, but mm -hmm. also in themselves. And yeah. I think they just have a hard way of articulating mm -hmm. it. And then by the end of the program, you're like, who was that? Who was that? Who was that eight <laughs> weeks ago? Like we've, we've had parents come up to me, um, to us and be like, I don't know what you guys did, but I, they could even see a difference mm -hmm. in how their child walks and talks and interacts and everything. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the most fulfilling parts of it. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, imparting this entrepreneurial mindset on the students and our ultimate aim of fueling the entrepreneurial economy. Mm -hmm. But I think also just seeing the confidence within themselves to be able to do things beyond. And even if they find that entrepreneurship isn't for them, they mm -hmm. still have that mindset to carry them on as they continue their yeah. careers. And I think also... As students, a lot of times they think of an entrepreneur as somebody who makes candles or yes. someone who bakes a cake or whatever. And I, we try to let them understand that you can be a doctor and open up your private practice, yes. right? That's an entrepreneur. Yeah. You can be a dentist and open up a private practice. That's an entrepreneur. It doesn't have to. It's entrepreneurship isn't, you know, one focus or That's one right. set of things. It can be a range of things. You could be a CEO of. Yes. An international business, right? But but you started it, so you're an entrepreneur. So just trying to get them to understand all the nuances of entrepreneurship. And I think another thing that I think is also key is when you talk about mindset, mm -hmm. you talk about the ability to problem solve, mm -hmm. right? Because most businesses are started from they do it this way and I don't like it or yeah. it's not right or I could do it better. Yep. You know what I mean? Or you've identified a problem in the market and you're like, well, I can fix this or a gap in the market. Yep. Um, or even it may already be, let's say candle making, for example, well, it's tons of candles out there, but you're like, but I can do it better. Yep. I can do it different. And so just understanding that you have the option, you can put your spin on it. Yep. I think it's huge yep. because, you know, as you grow into adulthood and let's say you don't decide that you want to start your own business, the way you look at problems mm -hmm. and focus on the solution yep. versus, on, yeah, yeah. Ver versus on just the problem, yep. I think is huge. Yep. And you know, you can't, you, once you have that understanding and you know how to do that, then your life can change. Yep. How, how do I come to the table with solutions instead of being like, oh, well, oh, this happened yes. again. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that's one of the things that we also try to get them to understand is that, um, Although nobody likes to fail, like we like to say fail forward, yes. right? Like understand in that moment what happened, what went wrong, pivot. Yes. Pivot or brush it off and continue. Um, and then how do we make sure that th that doesn't happen again? Right. And another aspect that we do within the two weeks of the training is that we bring in local entrepreneurs mm -hmm. to get them to talk to the students about their journeys mm -hmm. and the, the problems that they might have had or the failures that they might have had because a lot of times... As an entrepreneur, you want the next generation yes. to succeed. So learn from me so that you don't make those same mistakes, right? Um, so it's, it's really nice to see. And then even the people that come in are very open to, here's my number, here's my Instagram page, here's my email, call me. Like, don't message me at 11 p.m., yeah, but, you know, but send me an email or a message, and, and I'm willing to help and to help guide you and everything. So that's another aspect that we really enjoy. It's like that mentorship that some of the – the participants, not participants, people that come in to um, talk to the students have bring mm -hmm. as well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think ultimately 
like you said, over the four years, you've seen the program grow. Mm -hmm. What's one of the things that you're most proud of mm -hmm. that has happened having Project Manage the program for the four years? I would say each year the ideas get a little bolder, okay. I will say. So I think that's great in the sense of people are thinking outside of the box mm -hmm. when it comes to Bermuda. And then also when students start to like, yeah, you know, I don't want to just think Bermuda. Right. I, what, what does this look globally? Like, mm -hmm. let, I know I need to start small and like, you know, we can't be having you ship a thousand products within eight weeks. Oh, maybe we can. Yeah. But um, just having that mindset. But I think also the partnerships that we have, mm -hmm. um, giving the students the opportunity to vend in um, at Harbor Nights mm -hmm. or in the mall is, is really important because it not only gives them a platform uh, free of charge to promote their product, but right. it also adds that other element of them having to think on their feet mm -hmm. and them having to actually pitch their business to people. So it's a continuous learning that they have. So I think them being out in the public and having to talk to people, I think mm -hmm. it's, it's another part, I think. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about, because it's eight weeks, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm sure you have people, children or young people come in with these lofty ideas. Mm -hmm. They would take a lot yeah. longer <laughs> than eight a weeks lot more money. to get started, right? <laughs> So what is the conversation that you have? How do you help them to kind of refine their idea? And you mentioned pivot. Yeah. And how do you pivot so that during that eight-week period, they do have something to show for it, so they have something they actually built? Yep. How do you address that? So during the interview process, so once the applications are submitted, mm -hmm. we take about a week to kind of go through them, score them, and then we have an interview process. So through that interview process, we understand what it is that they need financially or just even just from us, um, and then also what it would take to kind of get to that point mm -hmm. and then what their ultimate ob objective is. And if it's this lofty idea, but we like the idea, we try to get them to maybe break it out into segments. Mm -hmm. So, okay, that's something that you can accomplish over 20 weeks, mm -hmm. but what can we do within, within those eight nine. weeks to make sure that you make money. Right. So for example, I do remember a couple years ago, we had Marley Spriggs mm -hmm. who um, started a book space, but her original idea, she wanted to write a novel, mm -hmm. which is great, but you can, I mean, you might be able to write a novel in eight weeks, but you know, as a writer and as a creative, it might take you longer. So mm -hmm. she pivoted and started to sell books. Mm -hmm. And then she created, a, I can't remember the, the name of it, but basically giving books to students and then having them read and have a book report and then from that you you can make money from mm -hmm. it so just little things like that like her ultimate objective might still be to write, to a, write novel. a novel right and her selling books isn't far removed from you know that that space mm -hmm. but just kind of getting them to understand that you know this is a shorter time frame mm -hmm. that you might like but how can we help you to refine it so mm -hmm. it's not it's never a no especially if we think that it's a great idea but mm -hmm. it's how can we help you to achieve your goals within these eight within weeks, that eight and weeks. yeah and i think that that's a good learning to have mm -hmm. right because in life yep. you might think oh yeah i'm gonna do this but the reality is maybe nobody wants to pay you for that yep. we just had um with our incubator um, we had a a session on the mvp your minimum viable product and what that looks like and i do think sometimes mm -hmm. in bermuda um we get excited about the idea yep. we love it yep but we skip the <laughs> step where you say does anybody is yep. there anybody that's willing to give me money for this idea that i think is so grand and i think that's a crucial step because what you have is you have someone super excited you've invested all this time and money into building this thing whatever it is and then don't nobody want to pay yes, for it exactly and you're like well what, <laughs> what happened, what happened? <laughs> um so i think that that that's huge you know what i mean yep. to be able to say great idea mm -hmm. but yeah like what can you do in within this time frame and then how do you determine whether or not it's going to work can you talk a little bit about what you do with the young people to help them to understand whether or not they're on to something mm -hmm. that is actually marketable or sellable yeah so within the the over the whole eight weeks mm -hmm. yes because in those six weeks we do weekly check-ins yeah and within those check-ins i'm asking how much money did you make are there any issues that you're having and if if you are what are some steps that we can take right. to kind of help rectify it or get you back on the track mm -hmm. on the right track but also within those two weeks 
we really emphasize pitching your business, mm -hmm. understanding your business, but we also bounce ideas off of, they bounce ideas off of each other. Mm -hmm. And we've had really, so classes normally finish around 1230 and yeah. at one o'clock rolls around, I'm like, ah, I gotta go back to work because <laughs> they're having such an engaging conversation, mm -hmm. right? On, we've seen partnerships. So even for Nico, him and another student that we have, Marcus, uh, Rewan, who does Special Misfits, they were talking about a collab that they wanted mm -hmm. to do. And that was in like day three right. of them just having a conversation and talking. So I think really having a space where there's open dialogue and feeling like you can talk about ideas mm -hmm. and I don't want to say criticism, but there's feedback, positive feedback, negative feedback, mm -hmm. but it's feedback in a way of we want you to succeed and do better. Right. So just having that open dialogue and having them being able to be like, hey, I tested this out, this doesn't really work. Could you tell me why it might not have worked? Right. Or even ultimately them pricing their products correctly. And we see that across the board, just in Bermuda as in general. But for them to understand also that don't price it based on what you think people would pay for it. Price it on your time, your energy, everything that you put into it. And what do you hear all the time? I'm going to be the cheapest. Yeah. And you're like, but how much it costs you, wanna, you to you wanna make yeah, a profit? You or... want to make some money, or you just you know doing community <laughs> service? But I think th those are mis mistakes that not just young people but yep. adults make. Yep. You know what I mean? Because um, especially like I, I would say in the retail industry, because we have to import everything, um, and then some people complain that things are too expensive in Bermuda. Yep. So they're like, I'm going to start my own retail store, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be cheaper than everybody else. Yep. But we have to import everything. Exactly. Right? So exactly. their costs associate with getting that good on island to resale yep. that you have to factor in in order for you to make money so you can continue to order the goods and all of that kind of stuff. So I think, um, you know, the lesson part that mm -hmm. happens at the start is, like, super important. Yeah. And that's why we try to do... Even though it's in the second week, we try to do the financial piece early on in the week yeah. so that they can start thinking about pricing their products mm -hmm. and build out a spreadsheet of, okay, this is what it costs for me to bring it in. Mm -hmm. And then they look at the price, they're like, oh. Oh, maybe uh, I can't yeah, be the cheapest. Yeah, right. right. So I can't be the cheapest because I was going to sell it for $20, but it cost me $19 to bring it in, right? right? So do I, I don't want to make a dollar profit and because you, it might yeah. be everything else that comes on top exactly. of it, right? So just having them to understand the financial aspect of it as well, um, I think it's really important. It is, it's hugely important. And if they get that right early, yep. then going forward for whatever the next business is, then they'll already have it. So they're already that much ahead of the game. Exactly. And the thing, the thing about the teachings and learnings is it's applicable to any business. Mm -hmm. Right. It's yep. not just the one that they want to start over the eight week period. Those same principles can be applied to whatever it is that you do. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Which I think is is really impressive. And the fact that some of these kids actually are still doing and working their business mm -hmm. is also um, it's inspiring. No, to it, me. it really is. And to see them. Because when I was at that age, I don't even think I knew what an entrepreneur was. Yeah. Right. And I think times have changed where. Back when, I can't believe I'm saying this, back when I was in school. <laughs> <laughs> but back when I was in high school, I think a lot of times it was reinsurance, insurance, yes, doctor, course. lawyer, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. I did not even know what an entrepreneur was. So when I you know, went to university and came back and I started, oh, people can start their own business. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can make money from it, mm -hmm. kind of thing. So the fact that these kids have that mindset already at as young as 12, 13 um, is is quite inspiring and mm -hmm. amazing to be honest because then who knows what, what? they can accomplish exactly. as they go on. Right? Exactly. And like you said earlier, even if their goal is to be a doctor mm -hmm. or um, to be a lawyer, then could you further that goal and say, not only do I want to be a doctor or a lawyer, but I want to own my own practice. Yep. You yep. know what I mean? I, that's how all businesses are started. Yep. They're started by one person saying, hey, what about this? Or let me do this. And then rather and than from starting there. from scratch, straight out of law school or, you know, however long it yeah. takes. And then trying to understand what it is to be an entrepreneur, at least hopefully you've been through a summer student program. And so you already know. So you already you know. So you're ahead head. of the game, right? So. <laughs> it's true. It's funny because, you know, on a regular day, BDC 
supports anybody who wants to start a business. Yep. So we do have lawyers yep. and we do have doctors who come in and want to start their own practice. Exactly. And they are clueless, yep. okay? Yep. We talk about the young people. They're like, wait a minute, what? I, I got to do what? Right. I, I know how to sew people up. Yep. I don't know anything about the business. And so I do think that if they're getting it at such a young age, mm -hmm. they are going to be better off for it because exactly. who knows where they're going to end up, you know? And I think also the community aspect of it or the collaborative aspect of it. So a couple of years ago, um, we had, I want to say her name was Daisha. I, I'm sorry if I got it wrong, but she was a photographer. Yeah. And some of the students have products. So because she was a photographer and they have products and they needed something to post on social media, that was easy money for her to make, mm -hmm. but just within that group, like, yeah. okay, cool, I can take your, your product shots for you to post it on, and, and mm -hmm. that's an, a great way for her to get her name out as well as everything else. So that collaborative nature of seeing who's in the room with mm -hmm. you and being able to leverage those connections as well, I think a lot of people don't do, mm -hmm. but trying to get them to understand that as well. Yeah, and I think that that is also key because once you understand how networking mm -hmm. and establishing your tribe yep. or your group can impact your business and help to propel your business, yep. then you're you're better for it. Because, exactly. you, you know, young people, like you said, sometimes you're an introvert. You don't want to say what you want to do. You don't want to um, engage people. But by being in a setting where everyone is like you, yep. they're all starting from the same kind of point. Um, and then you see the struggles. Yep. You're able to assist you're able to receive assistance, and so you're on this growth journey together, if you mm -hmm. will. Um, and it, I, I've seen it, and it's amazing to me to see how they come in, and then when they leave, it really is um, amazing to see the growth. Um, it's like a, a shell, a, yep. like a clamshell. You open, <laughs> the pearl is inside. You're like, oh, my God. That was there that whole time? It was, was there the whole time. And I think we always see it at the graduation, yes. graduation ceremony yeah. of just how much growth, and you're just like, Wow. Like rubbing your eyes. That yeah. is not, no, no way. <laughs> it's no way. Not the same, <laughs> it's not the same person. Be. Um, but it's, it's beautiful to see. And I feel like we're achieving our mandate mm -hmm. from, uh, from a BDC perspective of creating these opportunities for these young people um, around entrepreneurship and hopefully increasing the, entrepreneurish, the entrepreneur pool within yep. Bermuda. Um, so that as they get older and decide what they want to do, that they are coming back and building their own businesses. Exactly. And that's what we want because it con you know, contributes to the whole ecosystem, if exactly. you will. And, and I've had stu a student actually just as recently, I think the second year that I did it, um, you know, they went off to university. They were in university. They came back. You know, they went straight into corporate world mm -hmm. and whatever, but messaged me I don't know, maybe two months ago. They were like, hey, I really want to restart my idea. Mm -hmm what are the steps that I need to take? And, you know, I'm like, oh, I'll keep an open, same thing, open yeah. dialogue, we're here um, at any step, whether, you know, you spoke to us five years ago or three months ago. So yeah. it's, it's really nice to see that even though they've gone into corporate or into the working world, they distilled a little piece that's like, no, I think entrepreneurship's for yeah. me. So it's really nice to see. Yeah. I love that. And that we're planting that seed, it, it means that we're doing what we need to do. Because sometimes you're like, are these kids even listening? <laughs> do they even hear what I'm trying to say? It's like you're trying to force them. But I do think that once they see and it works and yep. they, they experience success, then they're like, oh, yeah, I can do this. When, the, when them first dollar bills start that, coming in, they're like, oh, oh okay, let me wrap up. What yeah, mean? exactly. <laughs> this is what you're talking about. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the logistics mm -hmm. and the details um, so that people who might hear this and are interested in participating or if they know someone um, that should be participating, they know what to do. So. Yep. So the program, the application deadline is Sunday, May 5th Okay. by 11.59. Please don't wait till 11.59. <laughs> but um, so that's the application deadline. From there, we will, as a team at BEDC, score the, the applications. And then the week after that, we will um, do interviews. So mm -hmm. uh, we will reach out to interviews more than likely after school mm -hmm. um, just to kind of, like I said earlier, to understand a bit more about your business if you understand your business and everything. And then all students who have been accepted into the program will know by May 20th. Okay. So unfortunately, we only have 10 spots. Um, you know, we do have a budget that we need to stick within. So um, not every student who applies will be able to get into the program. Mm -hmm. um, and then 
we try to give it enough time because we do understand that it's end of the year, mm-hmm. there's exams that are coming up. So the program doesn't start until July 1st, but okay. we like to give students more than enough time so that they know they've been accepted in the program. There's one less thing they need to stress about and then just go from there. Okay. So for the application, where can that be found? So just head to our website at bedc.bm. Okay. Under courses and events, you should see the Summer Student Entrepreneur Program. Just click that, um, and then you'll be able to see all of the information, and then just be able to apply. And then alternatively, if you just want to email us at info at bedc.bm, or myself at dsimmons at bedc.bm, and I'll be able to answer any more questions that people might have. But we really do encourage you know, grandmothers, grandfathers, guardians, whatever, to encourage their um, kids to apply, because I do think that it is a worthwhile uh, it program. is. And everybody knows somebody who's like, that th- That person will sell sand in yep. the desert. You know what I mean? They'll sell water in the ocean. So that's the person that we're looking for. Exactly. And the reason why we've decreased the age of the participants is because we had yep. these young people that were switched on and they were already yep. doing stuff. And so for us, we we recognize that the majority of the time, the students, the young person is going to have to be out there actively selling, yep. which is why we had initially started at 16, because yep. they need to be at these different locations selling their products. But if you have a young person that is 13, even, we've had some as young as 12, yep. and is switched on and already has sort of this entrepreneurial mindset, then we don't want to be the ones to say no. Exactly. Um, it just will require support from that parent exactly. or guardian, right? In the event that they need to be somewhere, you have to commit as well to make sure that they're there because they're considered a minor and they would need they can't drive themselves right and and we don't want to penalize kids and be like oh well i know you're 12 but like wait four years yeah right we don't want to do that because we don't want to discourage and they'd be like well i I couldn't get the help that i needed four years and then you know by the time they get 16 they're no longer interested exactly so we're trying to get as early as we can but still within reasonable age so yeah well, I am excited about this year. I know we always try to best ourselves, so yep. I'm sure in terms of the amount of revenue earned, we would love to see um, our students and our young people earn more than that. Yep. Um, I'm just encouraging everyone to get your young person, sign up, make sure that they go to the website, bdc.bm, and fill out the application because there are only 10 spots. Yes, exactly. And everybody <laughs> who wants to, to experience it, we want them to have the opportunity to. Um, so don't wait. Exactly. May please, 5th please don't. Is... Yep. Right around the corner. <laughs> it <laughs> really is. Weeks. I can't take it. It's <laughs> going too fast. But no, Deshaun, thank you so much for coming talking about the program. Um, I know that it's going to be great because I've seen you from when you started to now, and it's almost like, you know, riding a bike, you yep. got this down. Um, and I'm sure the students are going to learn so much from you and from the rest of the team here exactly. as they journey along their entrepreneurial path. Exactly. Well, thank you for minding your business with me, sir. (laughs) And remember, if you don't mind your business, who will? (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for tuning in to Mind Your Business with me, your host, Jamila Lodge. Tune in next week, Thursday at 4 p.m. Because if you don't mind your business, who will? Mind Your Business is brought to you by BEDC. Bermuda business starts here.